Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. So it is, I have to think, April, and it's spring, and it feels like it, and it's wonderful. So thank you for joining me. Um, we are always talking about our So Confident program of the month, and I want to point out our So Confident garment for April. We're taking the whistle shirt and turning it into this variation with a diagonal seam across here that forms this interesting miter, side panels that are cut on the bias so that you match the stripes at the side seams, separated by some nice baby piping, and contrasting fabric for the cuffs, the under collar, a button tab, and of course the piping. So we were just taking a little inventory of our kit situation. This is one colorway called, I've forgotten, Sunburst? Yes. yes. We have one Sunburst kit left. We have three of the other colorway that we offered, which is wine. And so we have ordered some additional colors. We haven't ordered any more of the Sunburst or the wine, but we've ordered some additional colors. So we'll be offering those to you very soon, as soon as the fabrics come in. But you can always sign up for the monthly class, kind of get ready, and then when those kit offerings come out, you'll be able to order a kit. Uh, but please sign up for the monthly class. I think it's a pretty good video. Um, we've got a couple more weeks here left. I don't even know what the date is, actually. <laughs> I've sort of lost track of April. I was on vacation for a week, so um, that always messes you up, you know. Anyway, you have lots of time from now until ever, actually, to sign up for So Confident for the Year and the So Confident for the Month class. So take advantage of that. I'm really crazy about this shirt, though, I have to say. And it's been fun to see uh, what people are doing with this. We have our monthly Q&A, uh, the first one this coming Thursday at noon Central Time. So if you have specific questions about this garment, please come to the Q&A and i will be glad to answer. I already have a couple of things that I've received from you via email, and I'll be answering those, but you can always ask me anything that you want in the Q&A sessions that last about an hour. So that's part of the So Confident um, perk that you get when you sign up, and we'll be talking about the Whistle shirt. So I said I was just on vacation. I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I was actually doing a painting workshop, and having some fun and kind of scouting things. I, I think we're thinking about doing a workshop in Santa Fe a year from now or so. So as we develop those plans, we'll be letting you know a lot more about it. But if you think that sounds exciting, you might just drop us a note and say, oh, Santa Fe, you know, fabulous place, and it is. Uh, but I got to go into oh, five or six of the independent clothing stores there, and I got a sense of what's happening for spring and summer and it's really interesting. So I'll probably be referring to that, you know, over the course of the next few weeks and so forth and even today. Next week, we start our London textile tour. And so we're leaving. It starts uh, basically on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be traveling, of course, before that. And we're headed to a wonderful country home called Goodnestone, or Gunston. It's spelled Goodnestone, but uh, pronounced Gunston where we're going to be sitting for a few days and doing some beautiful vintage textile collage work with artist Mandy Petullo. Then we're going back into London to uh, participate in London Craft Week with some workshops and showings and displays and all of that. So really excited about that. Uh, I'll be gone for a couple of Tuesdays, but of course we always have our Facebook Lives no matter what. But Alex and I are going, and we will be doing a live Zoom something or other from there. We want you to see the experience and see where we are because uh, we love our London trips. We've been doing, I think this is our third one or something like that, maybe fourth, I've kind of forgotten. But uh, every year we try to bring something new to the tour so that if you want to go again, you have new experiences. But next, next week we'll be starting that. And speaking of events, uh, we do have events in Topeka, Kansas, called So Kansas. And for those of you who don't know anything about that, it's where you can come to Kansas, to our studio, and work with three or four of us on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We only take 10 people, 
and you can start on a Tuesday night with a trunk show of what's new and what's happening at the sewing workshop, and then three days of personalized fitting, wardrobe consultation, color, looking at color, just being able to try on the hundreds and hundreds of clothes that we have and get a sense of what you want to sew. Of course, you can sew here. We have sewing machines here in a studio. Uh, or you can just have a good time and shop for fabric and have a plan, leave and know what you're going to do for the next few months. But I'm saying this because uh, we have one starting March 16th, or excuse me, May 16th, uh, three weeks from today, actually. And we had uh, one cancellation and we have one opening. That is available on our website right now. We've opened that up. So if you want to come, uh, please sign up via our website. Uh, if you have questions about it, you're welcome to call us, email me, whatever. But uh, amazingly, we have one opening. And we, did, we do have a wait list, which we've reached out to. Uh, I'm not sure what the response has been on that, but I think that one spot is still sitting there. So whoever grabs it first is going to get to come to Kansas in three weeks. And the weather should be gorgeous. And it's a fun event. We have lots of people who come often and realize that it's a real valuable tool for them to be able to try on the clothes, get a sense of size, and uh, putting, putting things together in a, uh, a more of a wardrobe plan. And it's a great way to go home and have a plan for what you're going to sew. We're going to be talking about a plan and so forth today, but I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, we're also working on what we're calling a summer series. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just introduce it just a little bit, and then we're going to talk about it more as uh, we get closer to the time. But it's going to be a, a class that's going to be, happen over the, a live Zoom class, or maybe a video class. That's one of the things we have to decide, actually, uh, that will occur over the summer, June, July, August. It'll be one class with three different teachers, three different approaches, and you're going to be able to take that class over a period of time and make a beautiful, beautiful artistic garment. So that's coming up. Then I got a new book in the mail. I pre-ordered it some months ago. Uh, three years ago, about three and a half years ago, I think it was, Sarah Campbell, who's a textile artist, textile painter from London, was here and did a week-long workshop. And it was fabulous. And I know I've shown some of these things before, but it's always fun to see them again. This was one of her samples that she did. Uh, and I managed to nab it and kept it. But you can see that she was demonstrating various techniques in these little blocks. So this is just a sampler of some techniques that happens to be printed, or not printed, but painted, <clears throat> excuse me, and stenciled and so forth on our viscose linen fabric. So I kept this. And this is very much what Sarah Campbell is all about. This is her look, her colorations. She does uh, some collections for Free Spirit, quilting fabric that you may want to check out. And we have made many of our garments in the Free Spirit cottons, and we really love them. But this is her new book called Hand Painted Textiles by Sarah Campbell. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. The photography is lovely. She talks about all of her processes and a great inspiration for stamping, stenciling, painting, all kinds of techniques. And I know you will love this book. So uh, it's published by a publisher that I actually had not heard of, Herbert Press. But I'm sure I bought this on Amazon, and I'm sure you can buy it in a number of ways. So check this out. All right. So. Hopefully, you all take Threads magazine. And the latest issue, which is summer 2023, magazine, or number 222, looks like this on the front, has an article in it that I wrote called Color Design Strategies. And I thought it would be fun for you to have the advantage of actually seeing the clothes and we can discuss what was uh, presented in this article. But of course, you can go back after today, and maybe you've already read it, uh, and actually take a look at this uh, article. It's quite a spread, actually. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, it's an eight page spread. So it's, uh, it's a pretty nice full length article with lots of beautiful photography and pictures and great color. But the concept of this article is all about the idea that what do you sew? How do you pull it all together? You know, I'm really good at making black pants. You know, I have eight pairs and, you know, I'm going to make another one this week, I'm sure. But then I have all these random pieces in my closet. I'm getting ready to go to London. I'm pulling together what I'm going to wear. And even I'm having trouble kind of pulling it all together. Um, you know, there's a sort of London sensibility of coloration. I don't want to be too bright. Uh, and what coat do I wear? And, and how do I coordinate several pieces on the top to go with maybe a limited number of bottoms? And how do I get it all in a not a huge suitcase and not multiple suitcases? So there's all that that plays into it. But I find that I have I'm attracted to one piece of fabric. I'll make something, and then I have to figure out what to how to work with it. So today I'm going to discuss a little bit of the strategies that I put into this article, and I need to even read it myself because I get lost, and sometimes I want to sew, but I don't know what to sew. And it's not because I don't have any fabric. It's just I don't know how to, I don't know how to bring out a few pieces and make a couple of pieces and then have this transitional, interlocking, um, mix and match sort of wardrobe. And that's what this is all about. So I'm someone who is really attracted to pictures of interiors. Uh, I take a couple of magazines that relate to interiors. And I don't take fashion magazines anymore. I can't really relate to those any longer. They're very extreme. They're kind of fun to look at. But they don't apply to me and what I'm going to wear on Tuesday morning in Topeka, Kansas. So I find that I'm more inspired by color and combinations of color when I look at beautiful pictures of interiors or architecture or even nature or food or whatever it is that your thing is, but it's not necessarily the latest Vogue magazine with the tall, thin model in the outrageous garment. So I'm going to show you uh, how I start. And many times I'll just find a beautiful picture in a magazine or a book that just speaks to me and maybe it's the color, maybe it's the line drawings, maybe it's the combination of things, who knows. But you stop for a moment and you realize, oh, I like that picture. It, 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 it's not anything I'm ever going to do in my house. It's not anything I'm ever going to uh, take a picture of myself, but I like that. So let's work with it. So here is a board that is a sort of starting point for us. This is divided into two different sections, so I put a little black line there. So we're going to talk about this for a, section, for a minute. So I used to take Anthology magazine. I can't really tell you whether that magazine even exists or not, but I kept the issues because they were very interesting, more contemporary interiors. And this was the cover of one issue from a long time ago. I've cut off the date, I guess, but it's, it's a few years old, actually. And I was drawn to it because of the colors, but also of, I'm, an, I'm an, a former interior designer, and so I've had all these many, many hundreds of opportunities to present proposals to clients. And I can't imagine trying to sell this concept to a client. You know, these bold draperies and all these fake cacti. And it's just not a look that I'm, I'm going to try to sell to somebody. It's not my part of the country. It's not my personal selection and all that. But I was very interested in the colorations and the texture combinations. So I was looking at the two shades of green that happen in the drapery and the cactus. We have two or three shades of, of beautiful green. Uh, it had this odd-looking cactus here that looks like it's been crocheted in white with a little pink hat hanging on it. These cactus have some of that same pinkish flowers. And then all of it, in including the white, is sitting on this striped rug. So I thought, you know, I, I like that. So let's, let's start with something. So uh, my first acquisition was finding a stripe that felt like the rug. 
And originally when I found this fabric, I remember saying to Brianna, who used to work here, now what would you make out of that stripe? In my mind, I was going to make a jacket because it's kind of that type of fabric that would look great as a jacket. And by the way, this was a, a horizontal stripe off the bolt. She said, oh, that's pants. I went, oh, okay. So I decided this was pants. So I went out and found a bulletin board, which, by the way, is hard to find uh, these days. You know, bulletin boards are on computers now. But I found a good old cork board, and it was perfect. So found my first stripe. Then I was able to find this white that has a gutsy cable-like texture to it, and it reminded me of that cactus. We have many, many colors of linen, always, year-round. So I found the two colors of linen, the dark and the light. It's my, one of my favorite colors. And then I thought, well, I need to accent that a little bit with some, some of that pink, and then maybe I pull in another stripe. Well, how do I decide what is what? What am I going to make out of what? Now that I have my fabrics that I like, I like the combination of textures, the shades of color, and so forth. And by the way, when I was in Santa Fe, white and natural, and even Aaron sent me something today from Anthropology that this beige and white and neutral is the new black. So that, even though those don't match, that's all over the place in fashion right now. So at any rate, uh, the first thing I did was bought a book that, I'm not sure what this book is called, actually. Uh, but in it are what are called croquis. And what a croquis is, is, I don't think you're going to be able to see this on the camera. It's so light, but we'll see. But there are figures. Is it even showing up? It is. Sort of. Sort of. The light um, is a little extreme. Yeah. It, it's pretty hard to see. Let me see if there's any darker ones in here. Um, no, they're all very light. But they are outlines of figures. Now, I can't draw people, horses, dogs. There's a lot of things I can't draw, but people is the one. So I took out one of the pages from that book and took these fabrics and cut them up and began to just put these shapes, what I'll call the big shapes, pasting them onto the figures that are on the page, trying to decide what the proportion relationship should be. Is the dark green pants? Is it a top? Is the light green on the top? Do I run the stripes vertically or horizontally? Both, as you can see. So this gave me a sense of standing back and, and getting a sense of, first of all, how much fabric I might need, because it was either going to be a top or a bottom. And did I like the relationships of those fabrics on a figure? So that was my starting point. So then, with the help of Aaron, because I don't know how to do this, uh, we have fashion illustrations, it, technical illustrations in our patterns. And so you can take that and blow it up on your uh, printer and have little paper doll cutouts. Now, Aaron is good enough to take a picture of this fabric and actually put it on this garment. Me, I would have to do colored pencils, which is fine, or crayons, or something like that, or even paint, whatever. But she superimposed the fabric for me on these garments. So I decided that I like this look right here. So here are the uh, Valencia pants in a stripe. Here's the ET in the little cable knit in white. And a top over that, so it's layered. Got a little bit of the uh, T-shirt hanging below the top, whatever that was going to be. And I decided that was going to be the Nine Lives, which is like a vest. So I had my three pieces. Then I never got around to doing anything with the pink. By this time... I was beginning to be bored. That's one of the problems. But I hung with it, you know. 
So I decided I could add the pop of color with a shoe or a scarf, which I already owned, or a belt. I don't wear belts per se, although I might wear a belt under an, uh, an overlayer. But I'm not a belt person. But the accents, it could be jewelry, it could be earrings, it could be a necklace, it could be a bracelet, it could be anything. But I chose not to make a garment out of the pink fabric and use this as inspiration for some, um, just an accessory. So let's take a look at how those garments ended up. And we'll come back to this board in a minute. So we have the pants. These are the Valencia pants which I happen to really love because of this flat portion of the waistband. And I did use the, uh, the fabric, cut it on the cross grain so that the stripes were horizontal. And one of the things I like about the Valencia is there's no side seam, so I didn't have to worry too much about the, the placement of the stripes and how that would happen at the side seam. That's a good pattern for that, because, for that very reason. And this is the shorter version. I knew this was going to be a summer piece. So we have two lengths of Valencia's, longer and shorter, and I did the shorter ones, kind of cropped. This is the ET. That goes over the pants. And then the next piece, which is the Nine Lives in the linen. So that was the first ensemble. So I decided to take it a little step further and actually make a pair of darker pants, the darker green. Now these are actually an older pattern of ours called the Quincy pants, which we don't have this pattern anymore. But as was promised to the So Confident people this year, we are working on a slim leg pant to be made in a woven fabric. We have that, in fact I have them on today, helix pants and pencil pants that are very slim that you make a knit. But the one thing we don't have in our line right now is a slim leg pant to be made in a woven and that's coming. And it'll be very much like the old Quincy, although we're gonna superimpose the leg on another form and all that, but that's another story. So, um, and then um, make a black and white stripe top, which is the Odette top, rather than the striped pants, and then put a Balboa top over all of that so that just a little bit of the stripe peeks out. So the first three pieces, short top, longer t-shirt, wider pants. This is oversized top, long, this t-shirt does not stick out, and then you have slimmer pants, so the proportions are better. So that was the first assortment of garments. All right, so then let's take a look at another one. So this is a picture of food, the makings for a salad. And it's mostly kale. There's some spinach and some Swiss chard and all of that, but it's big, leafy, beautiful leaves. And you see the stalks in orange on the Swiss chard. Well, of course, I'm a green person, so I was attracted to the leaves and the colorations of the leaves from dark to light and all of that. My first selection was this fabric because to me it felt like a salad. That, it had nothing to do really <laughs> with anything that is specifically in this food picture. But the mixture of colors and the relationship and the scale of things, it just felt like a salad. So that was my starting piece. Now, when you look deeper into a photograph, 
you study it just a little harder, all of this is inside of a colander that's silver. So that led me to a fabric that I thought would make a nice, neutral, basic jacket. And so I chose this fabric that had some texture to it. Colander has the little holes. This doesn't have holes, but it has enough texture and variation to it that I felt like it worked. And then I pulled out this burnt orange color for some pants and thought that I would accent it with this dark green of the kale. So that was where I started. Pants, jacket, top in the salad fabric and the mix it, or excuse me, the Anne's tank in the dark green. Well, I remember Alex either coming to town or seeing something and, and so my salad fabric, she loved, but she wanted pants. Oh, well that messed me up. So I made pants. So I never got around to making the top. It was going to be a cottage shirt. So this is the salad fabric, it's pants. And she wears these pants. I had to have her ship them in from Cleveland so I could show them to you because she wears these all the time. And then I did make the colander gray jacket. I never got around to making the green Anne's tank, but I already had a Eureka top in this beautiful orange, trimmed in green. So that was already in my closet. So I didn't really need to make something new. But doing that board and these little silhouettes got me to the place of looking a little bit deeper in my closet, figuring out uh, something totally different. I did ultimately make the orange pants and then, of course, did not have uh, enough fabric of the solid fabric to actually make a top, but happened to have a cottage shirt in a different fabric. I love this fabric with people and faces and so forth, and that worked. So two of the pieces of this were pieces I already had, and that was satisfying to be able to pull this together because I really didn't have anything to wear with this, but I loved this fabric. Anything with faces on it, I love. So that's how this all got put together. Not because I made four or five new pieces, but because I made two or three and was able to fill in with what I already had. The other thing I talk about in this article on threads is the idea of some journal keeping. So sometimes when I know I want to make something, I just don't know where I want to go with it. I might be inspired by a picture that I see, and I, and I was inspired by a coat that was on the Holly Badgley website. She's a, an artist in Sausalito who used to teach at the sewing workshop in San Francisco when I owned it. And I love her work. And I thought, oh, I just I want to do something like that. So I started with that and began pulling out what I thought was a, a pattern, a jacket of ours. This is a Chicago jacket that I thought would be a good starting point for this jacket. Began pulling some stripes and denims and chambries and that sort of thing and just pasted them into my sketchbook, basically, just to record my thinking. And then I started making some sketches of where I was going to put these blocks of color. And I took the technical illustration of the Chicago, printed it off, and these are tracings on vellum of these with just some ideas. And I realized after I got to this point that this is not me. I was trying to copy Holly Badgley, which is impossible. But even if I could have gotten something close to that, it's still not me. 
So I could put a big X through this. Not going to do it. So that's when I started thinking about other ways to do this jacket. And I started making notes and making little samples using the same fabrics that I pulled initially. And once I figured out what I was going to do, then I really started making some uh, samples of how I was going to do that. How was I going to bind, so to speak, the front of this jacket? How was I going to finish the top of this and make this look good? Because this is a different technique than what we actually have in the guide sheet. And then I had other issues of, let's say, top stitching. I don't do much top stitching that's decorative. How am I going to get through three layers of heavy denim and make that top stitching look good? What kind of needle do I need? What kind of thread am I going to use? I knew that I was going to use the pieces and parts of the pattern and bring them to the outside of the garment rather than the inside. For instance, the pocket was all of a sudden going to show. So my top stitching was going to be super visible. Anyway, notes, order of construction, samples of how I was going to make it, all of this in a journal. And I did this before I ever cut something out. So I did not waste my fabric. I knew exactly what I was going to tackle when I got it cut out. Um, I, I'd sorted out all of the problem issues and made little samples before I ever cut the garment out. So this is how it turned out. This is also in that Threads article. I think you may have seen this before, but this is uh, uh, what, I, what I ended up with. So we have this pieced, ticking, chambray binding on the fronts. The pockets, each one of them is different. And normally, they would be on the inside of this garment, and you would see some top stitching only. But now you see the different fabric and the top stitching. I put a facing on the cuff, which it doesn't usually have. I do a lot of contrasting under collars. I like these little tabs. Uh, I actually added a yoke to this, which it doesn't have in the pattern, so that it just looked pretty on the hanger, basically. There is an advantage to having something like this, though, on the inside of a jacket, particularly something like denim where it's not going to be sticky and it's a little smoother, so that's better, too. And then my top stitching is a real feature. A little longer length, heavier thread, big needle, walking foot, all of that. So I'm really happy with this, and we have a, an entire tutorial on how to do this. It's called Denim. Chicago. I think you can remember it. <laughs> so this is also featured in the Threads magazine, along with several other concepts and pictures and so forth. So I hope you'll check it out. It is the summer 2023, number 222 issue. And it starts on page 38. So check it out. Uh, if you don't subscribe to Threads, I encourage you to do so. You can either be an insider and get all of the access to the past articles, uh, or you can uh, subscribe for the yearly magazine. All right. Questions? Yeah. You ready for questions? Okay. Um, since you had the magazine out, uh, okay. um, there was a question. There's a small top with the salad fabric. What is that? Yeah, that I ended up not making. I think I may have said that. Um, yeah, that is the, actually, that's the old trio top that oh. we no longer have. But the Nine Lives is very close to it. And the cottage shirt is a similar profile uh, length and all of that. So those two patterns we do have. But this actual little cutout is a trio top. And what pants were, what pattern were the salad pants? Salad pants were um, Chesney's. Yes. 
Chesney pants. Okay. And what pattern were th was the gray jacket? Tremont jacket. Gray jacket was Tremont. I'm all messed up on my hangers here. Hold on. Oops. This is a jacket that can be worn closed with the one button or open and flowing. Um, can we see the nine lives, the green nine lives? They'd like to see a close-up of the buttons. Yeah. I think we still have these buttons. Oh, I love those buttons. Yeah. I don't know if this will really do them justice, but they have little numbers on them. Yeah, that's not yeah. showing up. They're a, a plastic button uh, that's somewhat translucent, uh, but it does have numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black little black numbers. Oh, a little confusion about why everybody keeps saying salad fabric, um, but that stemmed from your inspiration. Right. So, <laughs> right. Even though we're looking at like yeah, it doesn't look like a paisley. salad, but the, I call it my salad fabric. <laughs> This, the photo of the salad ingredients led me to this fabric. I know it's a stretch, but you know that's the that's what happens. <laughs> right. Never know where your inspiration yeah. will take you. Exactly. Um, and the gray jacket is the Tremont. 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 Yeah. Okay. Oh, and what fabric is that? Well, I don't know. It's a, a rayon. Oh, you know blend of something <laughs> that we don't have anymore. <laughs> it's like a placé though, actually. You know, there's a, li there's a, a linear weave line to it and then in between, slightly crinkled. So it's a big seersucker, but not very seersucker. But not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a couple questions about woven. So the, the salad, Paisley, <laughs> yes, is woven. Yeah, they're fabric. all woven. They're all everything is. Uh, woven. The only thing that's a knit are the two T-shirts, the ET, the white ET, and the Odette. Do you still have the green linen and the buttons from the nine nine lives? We have something very close to that. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not the exact fabric, it is awfully close. We always have that color in linen. <laughs> And we don't, I, I know we definitely have the buttons. You would have to call about the buttons, but that's no problem. What is the exact fabric of the salad pant? That is, you know, I don't remember whether this is silk or polyester. It's probably polyester because it just does not wrinkle. So it's a polyester satin, like a charmeuse, only in polyester. Are sewing workshop garment labels available? Yes, they are. Just give us a call. Give us a call. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, everybody wants to see what you're wearing. Okay, I am wearing the London shirt in our paper white viscose linen blend. I'll be talking a lot more about this particular fabric this summer. And then um, I've done some stenciling, or stamping. No, this is stenciling. And then some hand stitching along the bottom portions of this. And black buttons, of course. And then I have on the uh, helix pants in a knit, like a lightweight ponte. And I love the shoes. And the shoes. <laughs> yeah, my new shoes, my P448s. <laughs> Thanks to Nancy Schreiber, I'm into P448s. <laughs> I don't think there's any other questions. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I wanted to put together a group of things for you today to, to kind of see how my stream of conscious mind flows when I'm choosing things. And so I decided to pull, I just almost closed my eyes and pulled a book off of my bookshelf that was given to me by Ron DeGatti. 
And this book is a book about an artist by the name of ya, um, Yayoi Kusama. Now, for those of you who don't know about her, I'm not going to go into a big litany about her, but she is an artist who's been working for 80 years plus. She's 94 years old. Uh, she currently lives in Japan. She was in New York for years. And her form of art is multifaceted, but big installations, sculpture, very provocative, and a very fascinating woman. You should look her up. Um, and by the way, when I was, <laughs> this is an aside, actually. Um, Rhonda gave me this book and put a little note card in it. But I love what the note card says from Rhonda. My personal style is best described as didn't expect to get out of the car. <laughs> I don't know. That was so funny. <laughs> anyway, I kept the card just for that reason. That sounds like Rhonda. But back in, yeah, it does. But back in, um, I think, 2019, uh, we had a workshop called So Arkansas in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And we did a little side trip to the Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville which is a museum that was funded and founded by Alice Walton of Walmart. And they had just installed a room that you could enter. And the room was designed by this artist, Kusama. And it was all faceted mirrors and lights and color. And there would be some people who probably wouldn't be able to walk in that room because it was so psychedelic almost, but it was fascinating nevertheless. And so my first photo that I, whoops, don't want to lose that card. <laughs> uh, this is typical of the rooms that you walk into, that these installations that she does. It's a room that's probably, I'm going to say 30 by 30, at least the one in Arkansas is. But they're all over in, in major museums all over the world. And then the second picture that I opened was a painting by her. And I was drawn to the colors and the brightness and the boldness. Having just come back from Santa Fe, it felt very Santa Fe. So I had this book. I put it out on the table, went to the fabric inventory, and found this fabric. Now, that looks like faceted mirrors to me right away. It, it just spoke to me about those rooms, that room that I had gone into in this Crystal Bridges Museum and this particular artist. And then, of course, the orange in it was so much of what I had just seen in this picture. So there's nothing about this picture that has anything to do with this fabric, but the coloration the brightness, the orange, and then the other picture of her faceted mirror rooms. I, 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 just, I just pulled this. It was the first fabric I pulled. Well then, as I said, I was in Santa Fe. I went into several boutiques. And I would say half of the, each of those stores had crinkled garments, permanently crinkled garments. Fabrics that you could put in the washing machine, and the crinkles will stay. So I pulled out this beautiful white crinkled fabric. We don't know exactly what this is, but I know there has to be some polyester in it because the crinkles only stay permanently if you have a, fab a fiber such as polyester. So then, of course, this beautiful orange knit that I think is perfect with this particular fabric. Who doesn't need a black something? Black t-shirt, black top, black pants, whatever. And then this, neutral. This was one of the things that I noticed most. And the one thing that's really missing from my wardrobe is that camel, taupe, neutral pant. So this is a fabric that I am going to make some pants out of. And I think it's beautiful with black by itself. It's beautiful with white. It's beautiful with a print. Has a little bit of give to it. It's the perfect 
pant fabric. And the fiber on it is a blend. <laughs> so apparently we don't know where we got it, and the person who we bought it from didn't know what it was. So <laughs> that's how that works. But uh, my, my sense is that it is some rayon and spandex and... I don't know, it could have a little polyester in it, it doesn't really feel like it, but it could have cotton in it. It's a very nice, th this is the, the right side of it, which is why I'm holding it like this, a tiny bit of a satin finish to it. So it's, it's a really, really nice fabric for, I think it must have some cotton because you, it, you can see that it maybe wrinkles just a little bit. At any rate, this is a very interesting palette that was just simply pulled from picture, a couple of pictures in a book, pulled off a shelf. When you're stuck and you don't know what to sew and you don't know what to wear, go to your bookshelf, go to your magazine shelf, go to Barnes & Noble, go to the internet and just capture some image that really speaks to you and see if you can pull out some elements from that and try to uh, put, it, put it all together. So I was working on this yesterday and Deb, who of course knows our fabric inventory back and forth, um, said, well, you know, we're out of this fabric. And I went, well, that's too bad. She said, but you know, we have a lot of face fabrics, fabrics that have faces on them. I went, oh, yeah. So I pulled all of the fabrics that we have that have faces. We're charmed by these. Every time we see something from a manufacturer, we're going to buy it because it has faces on it. I, don't, I can't tell you. So I started with this one, which is cotton, I believe. Yes, 100% cotton. A little bit lighter weight than a traditional quilting cotton. More like a lawn, but it's not transparent. So this one's from England. In fact, three or four of these are. And then I found this one, which is also cotton. I love this. Just, those, just a little suggestion of an outline of a face. This one is very sketchy. Looks like some magic marker has been uh, drawn on this navy blue fabric. This one's also kind of the thing, but this same thing, kind of sketchy, but more like done with a paintbrush rather than a marker. And then the bottom one, which is all cotton, I believe, yes. Um, not exactly all faces, but certainly eyes and lips and, and definitely features from a face. So these are my face fabrics. And just makes me happy. <laughs> so these are the fabrics that I'm featuring today, but I wanted to show you specifically how I came to this arrangement of fabrics. We have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, can you hold up the book again? And um, what's, does it have a title? Well, the, uh, the title, okay, so there's the name, Yayoi Kusama, Festival of Life, okay. and by David Swerner Books. I don't know where Rhonda got this book. I should ask her. Maybe she's even on today. I don't know and could say. But it's a... This woman is also known for polka dots, so Betsy's all over this, I'm sure. Um, but just this you know, beautiful explosion of color and design. I'm sure Sarah Campbell follows this woman. A lot of great comments about the inspiration and... Well, I hope you will read the Threads article because not only does it go into more detail about what I've just shown you, but it has other things in it as well. So it's, I think it's a pretty good article. And when I pitched the article to Threads, they were pretty, you know, they were wanting it because it's, it's, it's something that we all struggle with. How do we, it's one thing to find, let's say, say take the salad fabric. You know, you might find a fabric like this and be able to pull out some colors. Let's say this uh, beautiful fuchsia pink and yellow and what, uh, taupey color. Maybe you end up never using the original fabric, but it got you to the place of two or three solids that really work 
that complement one another and work together. Who knows? Now the stencils on your London shirt, um, what are the stencils and what kind of paint did you use? Um, well, this is going to be a challenge for me to remember this. Uh, we did, when we did this workshop at So Arkansas, Nancy Schreiber was a co-teacher, and she brought a lot of stencils. And I honestly cannot remember the name of the company uh, that she ordered the stencils from, but they were this big, and they were just, I don't know. So I may have to find that and post that at some point. So, and then the paint is, uh, you know, a fabric acrylic paint something like uh, a jacquard, I think that's a brand, jacquard paint is what we used. And I used everything from a brush to a um, foam, a, either a foam brush or a foam stamp, kind of a dauber, I guess I'll call it, to apply it. And then once I had done that with the paint, then I have these lines of hand stitching with embroidery floss in both green and black. Just a simple running stitch. But the stencils, I can't tell you. I'm so sorry. I'll, I will figure that out. Um, Beth Warman um, mentioned that Diane Erickson is a good source for stencils. Yes, Diane Erickson has great stencils. Um, Diane Erickson stencils tend to be a little bit smaller, more delicate. They're beautiful, no question. Uh, these were a little bolder, which I like. A little more surface to paint. Um, the crinkle fabric, is that woven or? This is woven. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is woven, woven, knit, knit, woven. And how drapey are the faces fabrics? Well, you know, they're just traditional cottons, but because they're a little lighter weight. These three are cottons. Now this one is rayon, I believe. This goes. So this is super drapey. This is the drapiest of all of them. And the rest of them are cotton. And they're lighter weight cottons, but, you know, they're cotton. So there's a limited super drape to them. But they're pretty drapey. I would make a London shirt, a cottage shirt. I'd make any of our shirts out of these. Do you have any other colors of the crinkled fabric? No, we only got it in white. We bought this from a designer in... Um, LA, and that was it. Um, did you make your London and then stencil it? I cut out the pieces first, stenciled them, then constructed the garment. But I had the general pieces out first. Rhonda mentioned um, Dharma trading could be a good source for paints and stencils. Dharma training, that's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. D-H-A-R-M-A. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, great comments. I have loved and value this Facebook Live. This may be the best. <laughs> it helped me with a starting point. That's a great comment. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, um, Betsy did post that we do have it in black, I guess. Oh. The black crinkle. Okay, good. <clears throat> Um, could you use the viscose face fabric for pants? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. That would, that would drape about like this. Mm -hmm. Similar drape. Yeah. It's lightweight, but it's, it's good for pants. Something like the West Ends, the Chesneys, some West Ends, something a little bit on the flowy side. I wouldn't make a tight pant with it. Rhonda said she got the book in a little shop in Houston. Okay. Just trying to check for other, other questions. But I'm not seeing anything else. Okay. All right. So the items on sale this week are obviously all these fabrics. Um, we're not putting the patterns on sale that are in the article, mostly because uh, two or three of them really are discontinued. We just don't have them. And a couple of them were just on sale like last week. So uh, the only pattern that's on sale this week is the Chicago 
jacket pattern. And we do have the tutorial called Denim Chicago. It goes along with it if you want to learn how to make this jacket. Uh, the other tutorial that's on sale this week is called Storyboard. And it has many of these concepts in that tutorial, plus a lot of other resources of where to find inspiration. It's a, it's a long 50, 60 page PDF uh, tutorial called Storyboard. There is one other question from, or kind of a comment about the Threads article. Um, it mentioned that is there's a Florence shirt in green linen, because I know we have one. Is the article mentioned the Florence or the Balboa? Balboa. Okay. There Unless might... it's been, uh, you know, I haven't read this in detail. To... Oh, they do say Florence. It's, it's the Balboa. Okay. So we do have a flor green linen. Yes, we Florence. do. And maybe <laughs> I could be the person who made the mistake on this. Maybe so, I didn't. But either pattern, I guess, would have Yeah, absolutely. Effect. A long shirt. We no <laughs> longer have the Balboa shirt pattern anymore, which is why it's not on sale and whatever. So mm -hmm. Florence would be a great substitute for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you'll hear from Alex and me uh, in the next couple of weeks on a... Uh, and England, are we doing a Zoom or a video? I don't even know. Uh, we were talking about a Facebook Live for So Confident members. Oh, that's right. Is that what you're talking so about? So this will yes. be exclusive mm -hmm. to So Confident mm -hmm. members. That's right. It's one of the perks of being a So Confident member. You'll have your own private uh, Zoom call from London, and you'll get to see what we're doing. Yeah, Facebook Live. Or Facebook Live. Yeah. With the, so we'll the, <laughs> it's so this is all too technical yeah. for me. <laughs> To the, to the special group, you know, the special Facebook group that we have for uh, so-called okay. members. But we'll send you some information yeah. on exact yeah, exactly. time. And we have to figure that date. all out. Well, Alex has to figure that all out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going along. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next Tuesday, Facebook Live.